So here it is, guys, week one of a brand new series. It's called Surprised by Jesus. It's going to be awesome. It's taken by our very own Mark Pomery. So grab a coffee and listen up. Well, hey there, Elevate friends and family. Great to have you with us today. Now, let me just ask a very straightforward question. Have you purchased anything from Amazon recently? Because if you have, which I have, you will be reminded that their entire process is incredible. Like so, so dialed in. Everything. The order process, the checkout process, the delivery tracking process. Then they've got this thing dialed in as well, which the very day after your item has been delivered, I'm talking the very next day, you will receive an email from Amazon asking you to rate your recent purchase. And they do that because they know that a lot of people who are looking to buy a particular product from Amazon will actually place a lot of faith in the reviews and they'll go through reading those reviews and those reviews will help influence, hopefully positively, uh, their decision. And I know this because I've done it. Probably, yeah, early last year. Early last year, I was in the market for a new double-edge safety razor. Now, double-edged safety razor is kind of associated with the kind of razor that maybe your granddad used to use, but I can tell you it's the best decision ever. Best for the planet, best for the actual shave quality, and get this, best for your wallet compared to the disposable razor market. And so I had had a double-edged safety razor for over 20 years, and a little bit broke off, which rendered it useless. So I needed to get a new one, and I wanted to get a quality one, one that would also last multiple decades. We're not talking disposable here, people, that's for sure. So I started the quest, and there's a lot of choice, uh, but I kind of started honing in on the this one here, the Mueller R41. And this attracted my attention for a number of reasons. First of all, it's German designed and engineered. And if there's one thing we know that the Germans do a pretty good job of designing and engineering things. Uh, secondly, I discovered on Amazon that there was over 1400 ratings, which, you know, that's a lot, which out of the potential five stars, the average across the 1,400 ratings was 4.7 out of five stars. So again, this is good. This is, all the signs are pointing in the right direction. But look, you know, again, I'm making a multi-decade purchase here. So I wanted to do a bit more research. I continue to scroll the reviews. Good, 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 five star, good, good, good. And then I got to this section from the other countries and I stumbled across Giuseppe from Italy. And Giuseppe from Italy, his review is titled Lo Squalo, which translates the shark. And he went on to explain that this thing is a blood thirsty razor that could result in certain death. Then I found Humberto from Mexico. His rating was titled La Bestia, which translates the beast or the animal. And now I'm thinking, maybe not. Because here's the reality. More information isn't always more helpful. And we've been living with this notion for decades that if only we can know more, if we can have access to more information, then all of the problems in the world will be solved. Well, it's 2024 and we have access to more information than ever before in the history of humanity. And as far as us no longer having any problems in the world. Uh, and so my contention is that while more information can be useful, the gold standard we need to pursue is actually more wisdom. It's a wisdom it will actually help us sort through the mountain of information. We'll actually point to what's important and will give us some clues in how to apply the important 
information. So today we're launching a brand new series called Surprised by Jesus. And we're going to be looking over the next few weeks at some of the teachings that Jesus did, which were full of wisdom and will point us towards what's important and give us some insight into how to apply that. So let's start with this one today. If you've got your smartphone camera, how about you scan this flow code? It's going to take you to Matthew chapter 13. Now, Matthew's the first of the four biographers of Jesus' public life. And uh, we're going to drop into, well, I, I said it's Jesus' teachings. In fact, what we're going to be looking at is what's been commonly referred to as parables. Now, the word parable essentially just means to, to throw alongside. And so Jesus, who, think about it, he knew more about the condition of the human heart than anybody. He discovered, or he knew, that one of the best ways to get through and to make a point and to make that point sticky and memorable and helpful was to teach with this idea of parables, where he would tell a story that would be familiar in the local context, like an everyday story. And then he would throw alongside that the spiritual, the kingdom principle, which would be like, oh, I've never thought about it that way before. So here's one. Jesus got a crowd gathered among, uh, in front of him, and he says to them, listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. Again, very familiar to that agricultural society. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock and the seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was so shallow, but the plants soon wilted under the hot sun since they didn't have deep roots and they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. And then still other seeds fell on fertile soil and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Anybody with ears to hear should listen and understand. So there's three key pieces in this story. There's the piece of the farmer which represents God. There's the piece of the seed, which represents God's word and God's kingdom principles, which the God himself is the one that actually distributes them. And then there's the soil, which represents the human heart. And when we look at these, God, the seed, and the human heart, actually we have a reasonable level of influence over the second two. We have the ability to consistently expose ourselves to and ingest God's word. That's on us. And there are some things that we can do to ensure that our heart is actually the fertile soil, which ultimately is the one that's effective and productive. So as Jesus is there and he kind of references a little bit about what it means to hear and to understand, he then, this is where the parable comes in. He's told this familiar kind of cultural context story. And now he throws the kingdom principles alongside that. And he starts with identifying the first type of soil as representing someone with a hard heart. He says the seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom of God and don't understand it. And then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts, the hard heart. Now, last week I was just kind of uh, scrolling through the YouTubes and I came across some uh, pirate footage of um, Taylor Swift's one of her recent concerts in Wembley Stadium in London, which was incredible. So I'm watching that and my wife says to me, is Taylor Swift's tour still going? And I was like, okay, that's a 
fair question because it started in March 2023. And I said, yeah, actually, um, yeah, still going, still super popular. In fact, she actually sold out eight consecutive nights at Wembley Stadium, which is a new record, beat Michael Jackson. Uh, so, yeah. But get this, while that's happening, there's a bit of pushback. There's some people who starting to think that Tay Tay is the anti-hero. Okay, there's a little joke in there. If you know, you know. But why do we do that? Why do we just kind of not like people or not like things? You know, oh, I don't like that. He said, really, why? I don't know. I just don't. <laughs> I mean, this happens all the time with sporting teams. You know, here in Australia, some say, oh, I don't like Collingwood, footy team. And you go, why? I don't know. I just don't. And it's like, huh? Which I'm like, I, I, I actually, I mean, as far as rival footy teams or sporting teams, who cares? But it's also easy to get a hard heart towards people, and that's a problem. Towards the church, problem. And even towards God. You know, like people hurt you, and if they hurt you deeply enough or often enough, you can develop a hard heart. You know, if God disappointed you, and again, if he disappointed you bigly or frequently, you might start to get a hard heart. You know, if a church person betrayed you, which sadly is far too common, you might actually start to feel a hard heart towards church and churches. Now, Solomon, King Solomon, wisest person that ever lived, in his book of wise sayings called Proverbs, he actually encourages us to guard our hearts. Like, make sure. In fact, he says, above all else, guard your heart. So that's vital, but the danger is moving beyond guarding our heart being protective to ultimately becoming jaded and cynical. Because when we start to become jaded and cynical, we start to close ourselves off to what God wants to do in our lives. We start to close ourselves off to the people that God actually wants to bring into our life who can lead us to better and to hire and to add value. So guard your heart, but don't let your heart become hard. And then Jesus explains that the second type of soil represents a shallow heart. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems, or are persecuted for believing God's word. You know, I'm a, a bit of a lawn dad here uh, in Perth, and uh, I'm a member of a Facebook group called the West Australian Lawn Legends. And one of the kind of premises of this group, uh, super friendly, uh, super encouraging group, by the way, is that you can post up problems or questions or you know take a photo of something that's not working in your lawn and some of these fellow lawn dads who've been at it for years will will kind of weigh in and say well yeah it could be this or you should, probably should have tried this now one of the questions that comes up regularly and it's a it, it points to a rookie lawn e lawn e lawn e uh, is someone that says, uh, look, you know, my lawn's dying off and I can't understand it because I am watering it seven days a week. In fact, I'm watering it every morning and I'm watering it every night and it's dying off. I can't understand it. And every single time a new rookie lawn lover posts that kind of comment, the exact same response is, you're killing your lawn by watering it seven days a week. You're doing even more damage by watering it twice a day because you're not encouraging it to develop deep roots. So the roots are shallow and the lawn 
is dying off. Well, this is critical for us in our life. We need to develop deep roots. Deep roots are foundational. And we develop deep roots by actually planting God's word consistently into our hearts. And it will develop character. It will develop resilience. It will transform us. We plant deep roots by prayer, by being in this constant frequent, consistent dialogue, relationship with God, He will cause the roots in our life to go down deeper. And here's one that often gets overlooked. We develop deep roots by serving, by actually understanding that our time, the gifts that God's entrusted us with aren't actually about us. They're about serving other people and seeing the value in other people and then seeing like, Lives changed because of us serving. Those things develop deep roots. And then the third type of heart that Jesus talks about is a clotted heart. He says that the seed fell among, that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth. So no fruit is produced. So here in 2024, there is more competition than ever for our time, for our attention. So we need to be selective in what we give our time to, in what we give our attention to. Wisdom asks the question, are these the important things? Are these the things that are going to lead to an effective and productive life? And Jesus uses this metaphor of weeds crowding out God's word actually coming up. Now, here's a little picture I took yesterday of part of my backyard urban farm. And you'll see a sprawling plant which is called a nasturtium. These come up during winter every year in my urban farm, and I actually encourage it. They, they just self-sprout in the gardening world. We call them volunteers. And uh, I just let these go. And I let them go for several reasons, including the fact that as they just spread across bare ground, they actually stop weeds from coming up. Now, nasturtium good, weeds bad. Using the same principle, but tying it to what Jesus taught about, he said that, that like instead of nasturtium, good, weeds can have the same effect. Weeds can take the place of the nasturtium in this story. And instead of it, weeds coming up, it's actually God's word that wants to produce, but the weeds will crowd out the ability for God's seed to produce a crop in our life. And he specifically double-clicked on the worries of this life and the lure of wealth as being two things that we can easily give our attention to, clutter our thoughts, clutter our time, clutter our attention, clutter our energy, and sadly choke out and crowd out what God actually wants to produce in our life. Well, here's the final one. Jesus talked about a fertile heart. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. Now, I just showed you a little photo of a part of my urban farm. Most of our backyard I've developed as an urban farm. We have chickens and we grow vegetables and fruit trees and olive trees and nut trees and blah, 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 all the good things. Anyway, one of the, the primary role that I have in my urban farm is soil improvement. Like I'm the chief soil improver. I'm not the chief pruning officer, although I prune, 
I'm not the chief planning officer, although I plant, and I'm not the chief weeder, although uh, sadly I still have to weed. Actually, the thing that I that's my number one priority is soil improvement. Because the more I can improve the soil, the better return I get from the things that I'm trying to grow. So I have uh, compost bins, worm farm, we've got chickens that are pooping and we use their good poo. Uh, and every season I scoop the poop and I harvest from the worm farm and I harvest from the compost and I use the worm we as a liquid fertilizer. And I just keep layering that on the vegetable garden, layering that around the roots of the trees, layering that and layering that and layering that. I will layer it around our urban farm as quickly as I can produce it. As soon as it's ready to go, I lay it out there because the more fertile the soil, the better crop I get. And I know, and any urban farmer or good farmer knows, you are never done when it comes to soil improvement. There's always more improvement that can be had. Well, this is same, the same in our lives. Our heart developing Fertility is a journey and a process that's never finished, never fully completed. So no matter how long you've been following Jesus, don't be proud. He's not done. You're not done. There's more. Don't be lazy. So go after, go after more. God, I'm so grateful you've brought me this far and I'm so excited that there's still more that you can do for me, in me, and through me. See, in tertiary education, there's, the con there's this concept called auditing the course. Did you know that in most uh, tertiary institutions, you can go and sit in on a lecture. You don't even have to be enrolled. You, it, it, it's called auditing the course. You can just go and check it out. You can just go for some entertainment. You, and you can go for one or two and you can come and go as you please. But when you audit the course, there is no expectation or process for you to do the extra work, uh, have the group work, uh, take the exams, and ultimately become qualified in, in that area. Well, well, let me ask you this. In the event that you require surgery, when you go in for that surgery, you pretty sure you will want the person conducting the operation to have not simply audited the course at medical school. Oh yeah, like I, I sat in on like seven lectures over the course of three years. So here's my encouragement. If you want to grow, if you want to cultivate a fertile heart that will produce 30, 60, 100 times what was planted, don't audit the course. Lean in. Be consistent. Do the work. God's word, prayer, serving, community, showing up. That's the stuff that cultivates the sort of heart that will see you grow and be kingdom effective.